Okay, we are now moving on to Ms. Nora. I apologize, Nora, if I'm saying your surname wrong. Uh, Tupolaki. I hopefully you said it right. Okay, who is a teacher trainer with Notting Hill College, who has been an EFL teacher for 20 years, worked globally, worked with the British Council and Notting Hill College, and is has a an interest in SEM learners, sent learners. So I'm going, we're going to hand over to Nora now, who's going to talk to us about okay, accommodating students, okay, with learning difficulties in the classroom. Okay. Yep. Nora, the floor is yours. The floor is yours, Nora. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can. Perfect, perfect. Woo! Yes, I okay. Can see you too. We, we, we can see you even better. Okay, we're doing quite well with this. Okay, we're doing all right. Yep, this tech, we've got this technology thing licked. Yeah. <laughs> no worries, no worries at all, really. <laughs> it's always the same all the time, but yep. we are fine. We are flexible enough to solve out issues. Um, thank you uh, for this amazing conference, first of all. I have learned a lot so far. I actually, I've been reflecting a lot since the beginning of the conference. I have kept thousands of notes here. So I need to review my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the title of the conference, as you can see. Um, so first of all, a huge welcome to the participants. I can see familiar faces here in the, in the chat box and the participants list. Also a huge thank you to the um, presenters, my colleagues, amazing uh, presentation so far. And now I think I can start a little bit um, with my own presentation. I think that I can share my screen, right? Uh, yes, hopefully. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Very good. Good. Great. So hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, let me arrange my uh, stuff here so that I can see the chat and the Q&A box at the same time. Okay. I think I can do that later. Uh, first of all, a couple of things about myself. I'm uh, at the moment I'm uh, unpaced in Greece. I was born here and I started studying English literature. I studied educational psychology as well and I did my master's degree in Tizol in Nottingham University. At the same time, I have been working as an EFL teacher and ESL teacher for more than 20 or 25 years or so. Uh, but I'm particularly interested in special educational needs. As I, uh, 15 years ago, I found out that my little son back then, who is celebrating his 20th birthday today, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, he had some issues with his um, um, concentration. So I had to uh, help him with his uh, studying skills. So it was the time that I, uh, I understood and realized that I had to work more on the um, uh, learning difficulties and learning issues of the, the learners. And since then, I'm so interested in that. Um, the fact is that um, I have never stopped learning with these learners. And the title of um, the topic of this presentation, which is the ways of accommodating these students with learning difficulties in the classroom, is mainly um, inspired by the, um, the topic of, the, of today's session, of today's conference. Um, because uh, I always uh, keep notes when I teach students with learning difficulties, uh, because I I always make sure that they have time to reflect on my notes. And this was the time that I had to do that again for that presentation. Um, I gathered all my notes. Um, I did this kind of reflection. I reviewed them and hopefully at the end of this uh, conference, we'll be able to revision uh, a better learning environment for all learners, including those ones who are suffering from learning difficulties and be able to um, uh, make it happen. Um, first of all, we'll need um, to uh, see uh, what learning difficulties are. Thank you for the birthday uh, wishes. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, what learning difficulties are? Um, 
um, actually, they are a group, there are many of them, and they are a group of disorders. This is a more scientific term, the word disorder, which usually affect our brain and the way we process information. Okay. Uh, if you need to ask me anything, use the chat box or the Q&A um, uh, uh, box. Great. Um, these difficulties involve mainly uh, the... Um, um, uh, have, have to do with the acquisition, the way we acquire and use particular skills such as speaking, listening, greeting, writing, and they also affect our critical thinking skills um, and uh, mathematical abilities. Um, obviously, I'm sure that you all know because I'm sure that all teachers, all of us have experience with uh, classes which might have at least one student with a learning difficulty. Uh, we all know that these students um, experience frustration in the classroom because they have difficulty in learning and because they, they have tried thousands of times, they, they, they haven't made it. Um, the thing is that they've been doing that for quite long. Uh, they are tired, uh, especially if no support is provided. Uh, despite the fact that their uh, intelligence might be of uh, might be average or or higher level, and I need I'm pointing it uh, this out because if these learners are of lower intelligence, then we are not talking about learning difficulties, but um, we are talking about uh, learning um, uh, disabilities. The terms, uh, the terms difficulties, disabilities, and disorders are used uh, mainly are used interchangeably uh, in a context in different contexts in Europe, uh, USA, uh, etc. So um, there is no specific framework. Okay, uh, and again, uh, what I'd like to point out is that we are talking about learning difficulties, which are considered, let's say, uh, milder conditions. Okay, if we are the, if the level of severity of the symptoms that um, students, these students display is higher, then yes, we are talking about um, a learning uh, disabilities. Is that clear now? Uh, the term, uh, I'm going to reply to the questions in the chat box later at the end, right? Thank you, Tatiana, for the question. Thanks. Okay. Uh, types of learning difficulties, more and more learning difficulties um, come uh, and being, are being added to the list. Uh, the, most, uh, the most frequently used one is the um, dyslexia. You have all come across this term. Uh, we are talking about a neurological condition, uh, which is caused by... Um, different wiring of the brain and it affects the, um, uh, the reading skills, primarily the reading skills of learners. And of course, if learners cannot read, then this inability is transferred to the writing skills, right? Uh, one thing again is that all these learners, all these types of learning difficulties that we are going to have a look at today, um, um, are difficulties which exist since the day we are born. We are talking about um, uh, genes, faulty genes, I would say, and these are, these are the ones that should be blamed. Um, these difficulties continue as time goes by, uh, but the severity of the symptoms might be um, might be worse if no intervention is um, implemented or uh, things might get better if we help these learners. Um, of course, as uh, some of us, and I'm afraid that uh, um, now we are all aware somehow of the symptoms of learning difficulties, either of dyslexia or ADHD or whatever, and we can identify symptoms even to our, in ourselves. Uh, the thing is that uh, we need, in order to diagnose a student with a, ha as having a learning difficulty, we need to have um, the presence of specific symptoms for uh, being persistent for more than six or eight months. 
so be careful. We shouldn't be jumping to conclusions and label students like a, dyslex a dyslexic student or a hyperactive student or so. Okay. Um, and again, uh, one more thing is that um, as these students uh, grow older, the symptoms might, might be covered by other factors, especially during the teenage years. It's really difficult to identify the, um, the symptoms because they are covered by issues like um, poor self-image and issues like um, stress about the self-image. Okay, and one more thing, last thing. Um, um, we do have learning difficulties even when we are old. The thing is in that in this case, um, the difficult we are uh, we are able to um, control the symptoms, to manage the symptoms by ourselves because we are mature enough to realize that there's something wrong with us so that we we try to uh, cover them. OK, because we want to be uh, socially accepted. So. I move on with other learning, other types of learning difficulties. The second one is dysgraphia. Uh, dysgraphia is, uh, is the inability of the student to write coherently, which is uh, actually the, difficult, the difficulty of uh, a student organizing his or her thought and uh, put them, express them into a written piece of paper. Uh, usually students with dyslexia display symptoms of dysgraphia as well. Usually uh, symptoms of um, various learning difficulties tend to overlap. So this makes the diagnosis even more difficult to be made. Okay. Um, one more uh, learning difficulty is calculia. Um, not a quite common one. It has to do with uh, difficulty that students have with uh, counting, counting backwards. Actually, they, are, they, they struggle with, their, uh, with, uh, with maths. Dyspraxia, quite uh, common, uh, quite common one, and um, has to do with um, a difficulty that students have with their movement. Uh, dyspraxia um, might um, it might affect both uh, fine motor skills, which are the skills that we use we use when we when we walk, when we run, both and as well as the um, uh, sorry the gross motor skills and the fine motor skills, which are the skills that we use when we um, hold the pen or, or or something like that. Um, dyspraxic students tend to be clumsy. They remind us of the ADHD students. Okay. And finally, these, these students who are the ones who tend to be more hyperactive than they should be. Uh, in some cases, they could be uh, dangerous for themselves or uh, for the rest of the, their classmates. Um, they tend to be impulsive. They blurt out answers and ideas. They have lots of things in their mind coming and they want to, um, uh, to talk all the time. And at the same time, they might be suffering from um, uh, inattentiveness. They cannot concentrate and they cannot focus on tasks. How can we um, work? How can we help them in our mainstream classroom? Um, first of all, uh, there are four pillars that we need to work on. The first one is the, the daily routine. All these students, just like ordinary students, uh, because these students, they are not they are somehow different, but they are different in their own um, uh, concept. They need structure, they need clear routine. Uh, we need to organize the classroom in a way that there are no disruptions or distractions so that we can create a learning environment which, which will be conducive to the learning. The teaching practices that we are going to use should be suitable for these learners and we should be um, aware of ways uh, to manage their behavior in the classroom, uh, it might be disruptive or some of them might be uh, withdrawn or shy because they are, they are afraid of making mistakes. Uh, now, in terms of the classroom, about the classroom, uh, first of all, we should avoid any kind of uh, distractions. Uh, posters on the wall, shelves uh, which are full of books, 
Uh, I do know that we like to have a colorful um, classroom, uh, but in the case of uh, learners with learning difficulties, uh, this might be quite tricky and difficult. So what I would suggest is that uh, have the board, have the, the wall, which the board is, where the board is, uh, have it clear or, and you can just have, let's say, a small poster with the key information for the lesson and anything else that needs to be presented. For example, if you want to display the student's work, just use the back, uh, the back wall of the classroom. Um, adjust the light. Yes, there are uh, students, uh, especially dyslexic students are more than sensitive to lightning. So be careful with that and minimize noise and smell. Uh, smell, particularly, uh, I know that in terms of noise, it might be quite difficult, uh, but in terms of smell, uh, I can definitely say that um, some students are so sensitive that uh, any kind of smell might trigger an unusual behavior, and definitely we wouldn't like to have something like that in our classroom. Uh, the seating, in terms of seating, make sure that you see the learner at the front close to you so that you have an eye contact, if that's possible. Sit the learner away from windows and doors where students are coming in and out. We don't want them to be distracted by anyone. Pair the learner with a good role model so that at the same time you are creating bonds and you are helping these learners because they are suffering from um, uh, low self-esteem and they, they have issues with socializing because they are labeled as, let's say, lazy, if we're talking about dyslexic students, naughty, if we're talking about ADHD students. Um, and uh, it's quite weird, but uh, these students might be uh, popular, let's say, in their own way in the classroom because they are the funny one, they are the weirdos, but outside the classroom, it's hard for them to make friends uh, because obviously their classmates who are the same age and students in this age are really hard in the way that they are creating uh, friendships and the, the words they are using. They don't want them to be their friends because they are different, because they are weird, because they are afraid that they will spoil their, their game or they will um, they will, uh, let's say, uh, uncover their secrets. If we're talking about ADHD students who are blurting out things all the time without thinking first. Um, keep an eye contact with these learners and make sure you have a kind of secret code of communication. Uh, what I usually do is have these learners at the front, uh, the front desk, uh, when everything is fine, I ask them to have thumbs up. When there's something wrong, there's always a signal that they can use. I also ask them with, um, when I work with um, primary school students, I use the traffic light system. So the student uh, will have two cards, a red one and a green one. So if there is a problem, the student will raise the red card to me and I will uh, help them. I will help him or her individually. Or if everything is fine, they will just uh, go on with uh, the green card. Uh, regarding the school day, uh, make sure you, you create a routine so that learners need uh, have the structure they need and they, they will feel safe in your uh, lesson. First of all, when you start the lesson, make sure that you revise what you have told so that they can relate somehow. Um, inform about what you are going to teach and why, uh, because they, most of them are curious enough. They And still, again, they need to feel safe. They don't want to be uh, surprised. Um, I would say that it's, it would be great if you could have a separate copy of the lesson notes that you are going to teach and give them, give this uh, copy to the, these learners. What I usually do at the same time is have a part of the board where I use and write the key information of the lesson or the key concepts and make sure that you leave the information there until the end of the lesson because um, these students need time to copy information from the board. That's why I'm telling you that having a separate copy with these notes, the lesson notes um, for them uh, will be a time saver for you. Um, inform about the materials that you will, that the learners, all learners will need to use. 
Um, it's uh, it might be about the books and it might be about the pencils that you need to have. They need to have uh, all students, especially these D ones and those who are suffering from dyspraxia, need to have a clear desk and everything in order in front of them. No extra books, no extra pen or pencils. The way we are giving instructions, um, I think that uh, no changes here. I'm sure that all of us give instructions in by using simple sentences, make them, uh, making instructions short and clear and easy to understand. Um, when giving instructions, use both written and oral forms. Give clear examples, and if you have the time, model the answer with another um, with another student there. Uh, always check understanding of instruction, just like checking understanding of um, uh, the new concept, the the language that uh, the subject subject that you are teaching, and repeat if necessary. Um, I can say that I can definitely say that you you will need to repeat the the instructions more than once. Okay. Uh, how we, what we do when we are teaching something new, new concepts. Um, you should be presenting new concepts by using all uh, means available, visuals, audio, so that you can cater for all learners. Color code the key information, uh, either by using color uh, markers, also, you can use in the in the copies with uh, lesson notes. You can ask them. You can have um, color code color coding uh, there, uh, so that, for example, what I do with some of my students, dyslexic students, I ask them to highlight green the verbs and highlight orange the nouns, so that they can relate verbs and nouns. So I ask them to um, highlight green the root. Uh, of the of the um, of the word and highlight, let's say, uh, orange again. The the ending, the uh, the suffix. So it's easier for them to learn this way. Um, mm -hmm. Check understanding in uh, various ways. Um, you can ask them for uh, when we are talking about ADHD students and those who are uh, having dyspraxia. Ask them to move and come close to you and tell you what they have understood. When we're talking about learners who are dyslexic learners and those who are suffering from dysgraphia and they cannot express themselves well in a written piece of paper, ask them just to draw or use images or just graphs, something simple for them. Don't make their lives uh, easier, right? Uh, when you're working on tasks, uh, use variety the pace of tasks. And I'm saying that because dyslexic learners usually need more time to get things started, uh, while ADHD students get bored very easily. Uh, so the level of difficulty of the tasks should be appropriate. For dyslexic students, you could start with tasks which are uh, easier. And for the ADHD, ADHD students, for example, start with the most difficult tasks um, because the, their attention span is uh, really low. Uh, give learners the chance to move around. Uh, and of course, extra time. All of them need extra thinking time uh, to think of their answers and complete the task that, they, that you have assigned. Um, one more tip. Um, for all these learners who are having learning difficulties, um, I know it might be time consuming for you to prepare all this stuff, but we, we want, we want uh, them to learn and we want to help them. So uh, one uh, tip uh, as well is to uh, use, uh, have each task uh, in, one, in a separate piece of paper. Uh, one task, one paper. Uh, I know that the textbooks that we are using are not uh, friendly enough for this type of learners, but at least we can do that with the, uh, the type of task that we are assigning them and the copies we are preparing for them. Um, when we are uh, assigning homework, differentiate homework again, if possible, in terms of difficulty and the type of task. For example, uh, dyslexic students would prefer to do something like a multiple choice question task. 
uh, ADHD students would like to draw something. Okay. Uh, and I'm saying that again, I'm saying that if possible, because I know it's time consuming and uh, time wise, I don't know if you have enough time to prepare all this stuff. Uh, give copies of homework, having clear instructions again, a clear example and notes with the key information so that when the student go back, goes back home, he or she will have the piece of paper with the task, with a clear example and the key information, all of them on a piece of paper in front of him or her so that he can work more easily. Allow for various ways of response. Uh, yes, uh, of course they can read, they can write down their, uh, their answers, but allow for uh, notes, allow for audio notes or audio recordings. Dyslexic students love audio recordings. They prefer to, uh, to speak. Um, ask them to use images, to use, create stories. If we are talking about younger learners, uh, animation, you can take advantage of technological tools. Uh, now rounding off the lesson, how we finish, complete the lesson. Again, we need to review what you have taught. You see, uh, in terms of the lesson procedure, it's not something different from what we do in our everyday lesson, right? Review what you have taught again and again because um, because of their inattentiveness, these students need information to stick to their mind. If possible, give a handout again with key concepts and information so that they can refer to it anytime they are standing back at home. Uh, inform about the next lesson and the materials that you will ask them to use. Um, because uh, we said that they need structure and uh, think, uh, be aware that if you're planning to make any kind of change, uh, let the learners know because otherwise they will feel really stressed and we don't want to burden, to put more pressure on them. They are uh, stressed more than enough. Um, in terms of managing their behavior in the class. Okay, the key word. Use lower tone of your voice um, the, for the dyslexic students who are more stressed and uh, tend to be more anxious. Uh, the tone of our voice uh, should be calm, relaxing. The same uh, applies to the ADHD students because if the ADHD students sense that you're somehow um, uh, you're somehow you you can deal with them. They get advantage of that. So the tone of your voice and keep an eye contact with the learner. Speak to them clear. Don't raise your voice. Don't use negative language. We are not using. You must do that. You you mustn't do this. Reward the good behavior. Apart from rewarding the performance um, in the in the subject that you are teaching, reward the good behavior. For example, thank you, Kirsty, for uh, being quiet while uh, Paul was uh, presenting his work. Okay. Uh, be persistent with the reward. Don't forget to do what you have promised to do. Uh, these students have had enough of disappointment for, uh, from the environment. Um, we don't want to disappoint, the, disappoint them uh, more. And make sure that you reassure them that everything will be fine because uh, as I said before, these students lack confidence. First of all, they are frustrated. They are so tired of uh, trying and failing all the time and they need someone to support them uh, and they need someone to feel safe. They need someone to feel secure and we are responsible for that in our classroom. Um, one more, a couple of things more. Uh, let the learner express themselves in a written way. Yes, especially when we have to do with uh, hyperactive students and um, who want to blurt out their thoughts all the time, ask them to write down their thoughts and you are going to check the paper, make sure that you are going to check the paper at the end of the lesson. Otherwise, it's a promise that is not kept. Okay. Um, 
I allow them to doodle, yes. Uh, we they, they have a piece of paper and they can doodle something while I'm talking because I know that they are listening to me. They are listening to me. Uh, it's just the impression that, ha that they have that they do not listen to me. They can doodle and they can listen to you at the same time. This is a great ability they have. Encourage group work. Uh, but monitor carefully because we uh, sometimes when we have ADs, these students and they tend to blurt out inappropriate things, conflicts might arise. Uh, so uh, supervise and monitor carefully, but encourage group work because these students need support and need uh, our help with creating bonds. Teach social rules. Yes, it's absolutely important. Respect uh, each other, listen to the other. Ten taking rules for all of them. Uh, what I would, uh, I think my time is running out. Uh, final point from me so far, uh, teaching uh, learning, teaching learners with learning difficulties. Uh, standing close to them, not against them, not opposite them. They want us to be not their friends, but their, their companion. They want someone to trust uh so approach them this way approach them this way uh gain their trust if you gain their trust uh then you will uh, realize that their potential is magic magical and they can do wonders in the classroom that's for sure and take advantage one final point for me take advantage of their uh their strengths all of these learners are full of creativity, full of enthusiasm. And if you give them the initiative, if you give them the, the impression that they are valued in your classroom, uh, you will see a new word for, uh, from them. Um, this is the way actually I approach all my learners. Um, I'm trying to be close to them um reassuring them first of all because if we get them uh to speak to us if we get them to trust us uh then everything will be fine we are teachers after all and we can make things happen uh that's all from me so if you have any questions I can see in my chat box. Yes, uh, yes thank you. Yes, we do. There's at least five. I don't <laughs> think we're going to have time to get through them all. Okay, but there are. Okay, th there are. Okay, let's let's. Well, what time have we got? Oh, we, got uh, time. we don't really have a great deal of time before the next one. Um, again, same thing. We'll go. Th we'll get. We'll try and do a couple. Any that we don't get to, we'll post on and see if we can get some answers posted out later. Anyway, there has been one which has been upvoted, shall we say? So we'll deal with that one first. Uh, Manaman Mohammed, I have a student in reception who is five years old. He can't concentrate and can't remember anything if I repeat it many times. Mm -hmm. How can I deal with this kind of learner? This one's actually got a few people going, me too. So Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, before jumping to conclusion that this learner might be suffering from dyslexia or ADHD, we need to monitor that this kind of inattenti and inattentiveness is persistent for more than six or eight months. Okay, then we need to motivate them all the time. We need to grab their attention all the time. We need to be creative and innovative when we are uh, planning our lesson. So uh, make use of interesting topics, interesting uh, materials, just to grab their attention. Right, okay. Uh, do we, can we squeeze one more in, do you think, Kirsty? Yeah, why not? Okay, okay we're right. pretty much on schedule. Okay, I let's know, go we're for doing it. rocking and rolling here. <laughs> it would, who'd have thunk it? An educational <laughs> conference that's on time. All right, okay. Uh, bottom one on the list, uh, anonymous attendee. <laughs> Popped up a lot, this anonymous attendee. Um, how about hyperactivity in general, but in an excessive attitude, especially with a big number of students around 25? Yeah, okay. In this case, when we are, first of all, when we are talking about severe uh, hyperactivity, uh, we should always have in mind that in some cases, these students might need this, uh, children might need uh, medication. 
Okay. So, uh, but when we have them in our class and the class is large, please get this student at the front so that he or she is going to be very close to you, very close to you. Create a code with him, speak to him individually, him. I I'm telling him because, um, you know, we have this kind of image of a naughty boy as being an ADHD student, right? Uh, speak to him individually, have him or her very close to you so that you can monitor him or her all the time. I know it will be frustrating at the end of the day, all uh, all we send teachers are frustrated and drained and drained. But yes, it's really, it's really hard. You Another thing that I do, I usually do with uh, those ADHD students who tend to be quite disruptive, I assign them, give them roles. Um, for mm -hmm. example, I get oh, them, I get them, I get them uh, hand out the, the copies. Uh, please help me with the board. Or some of them might be uh, good with tech things. And I, I usually tell them, you know what, can you help me with my computer while presenting that to the rest of the class? So they, they need to, at, the, at that moment, they are focusing their attention on what they are doing and they are not disrupting anyone. Mm, interesting. I must admit, the idea of giving them some responsibility. Yeah. I suppose it's, it's like treating them as a responsible adult, really. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. Right. OK, I'm afraid we don't really have time for any more questions, but I honestly, there's enough there that we could keep us going for another session. <laughs> um, easily. OK, easily definitely. keep us going. And there's there's okay. a, lot of, a lot of comments that's coming Thank up you. about this. So. Uh, again, we'll try and get copies of the questions and send them over and we'll, we'll yes. sort of slowly okay. dribble out answers as, as and when we can. I will but be here. I can, uh, thank I can you so back. much. Really thank interesting. You. Really, thanks, thank uh, Nora. Really. Uh, again, you've thank sort of highlighted quite a few points that I've, again, I think a lot of the points, uh, something I talk to teachers about a lot is that many things we kind of already know, mm. but then it, it, it sort of takes something like this to kind of make us go, huh, huh. that's yeah. actually more of a <laughs> exactly. thing than I realised. Yeah, this uh, is a ha moment. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is one of those heart moments. So yeah. thank you so much indeed.